it's okay. fixed. Okay, it told me it's live streamed, so I yes. guess cool. Okay, so I click the button. So it works. We're live, and we're live. Mm, okay, I see it on LinkedIn. Just great. Be sure to mute yourself. The Technologies Podcast with Coach Dennis, number two. Gordon, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for inviting me. Gordon, what is the best way to explain what it is you do exactly in the technology world? Well, uh, I'm a product manager or in a scrum process, I'm a product owner. This is what I do uh, lately, but uh, I have experience with uh, different uh, roles around the typical organizations around IT and telecom. And my experience uh, from uh, before is more in the old school uh, project management uh, mm -hmm. area. So waterfall world mm -hmm. uh but uh lately i'm uh, i'm uh, a lot in the in the agile world uh specifically scrum so you know i have experience with both worlds and this is like the big thing like differences and misunderstandings and understandings between two worlds and uh, i guess uh this was interesting to you some in some, some conversations uh, we we were uh, having on LinkedIn, and I guess this this is why we are here. Yes. So looking at your profile, the conversation we already had, it does seem like there's a lot of traditional former formal training involved in what you what you do. Is that still the case with Scrum? Is that like an an upgrade of what you did? Um. Well the world of uh, old school project management i entered uh, well, while i was working in the corporations and uh, so it's not the same regarding the official trainings uh, but uh, it's the difference is not because of agile versus uh, waterfall or old school organizations mm -hmm. more, more corporate versus uh, smaller it companies startups so um i did have some some training, uh, but uh, it's it's less let's say formal than before. Mm -hmm. but, uh, also, uh, you know, certifications in the in those two worlds. I'm, I'm uh, speaking about the PMI uh, uh, from the waterfall side. Mm -hmm. um, the PMP certificate is let's say much more formal than some kind of scrum.org certification for product owner or scrum master. I mean, these are also, let's say in some way, quasi formal, but uh, much, much lighter, you know, much, much lighter, basically, and much less, I would say, asked for on the market than like five or 10 years ago when you would uh, apply for a project management job mm -hmm. somewhere, PMP certificate was not a must, but uh, really, I, I mean, it, there, was, there was always a question about it. But uh, now I don't think anyone asks, do you have Scrum.org certificate mm -hmm. for product owner? It's more like uh, experience, understanding, and talking about it, seeing uh, do you fit in the vision or organization or processes? That feels like there's a lot of, there's like a composite of this is my training and this is what, this is who Gordon is. So mm -hmm. if you put those two together, what is it about you, about you running like a Scrum or Agile team that's uniquely Gordon? That's that, 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 that might not be available in the textbook. Well, um, not sure how to answer this question, but uh, what uh, I, I have to apologize, I have children. So maybe <laughs> you don't have to apologize for that. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you. You will hear some screams probably in the background. Okay. Um, 
I will I will answer this question uh, this way. Um, the approach I like to take when I'm entering some new area, and I like to enter new areas, this is something I learned about myself, um, is to read about it, really educate myself. And uh, um, of course, improvisation is always necessary when you, when you do any work. Uh, but uh, I like to be prepared for improvisation, not to improvise, not, not to, at least to some to to try to learn on on other people's errors errors before I start making my errors, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I uh, for now when I'm uh, mostly in Scrum uh, as a product owner, I'm always reading about uh, about Scrum, about Agile, about uh, other frameworks uh, mm -hmm. like Safe or whatever um, product owner position. Uh, uh, different approaches. I like to read about it because you know I don't consider myself like completely expert. Uh, I, I really, I really feel I have a lot of lot to learn, and I don't think I will, I will get to the point in my life that I can say I can stop learning. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think that, that can happen. I mean, I see the guitars on your wall. That seems to be this. This uh, the the trainee the training mind mentality of there's always something new to learn. I see a lot of instruments. Is that yeah. following the same? Well, yeah, I'm uh, actually self self taught uh, uh, guitarist guitarist, and this is from more from a past. Okay. I I was playing in a band, uh, but uh, when I decided that I want to play guitar, ex actually I had the same approach. Yeah, YouTube mm -hmm. videos. Uh, this was when I was uh, 16. Um, YouTube videos, uh, books, and I learned it. Yeah. On the topic of improvisation, that's also what we like about rock stars. You know, those improvised solos that you see live on concerts. Mm. And I, from the community, I hear a lot of questions about some people just do that for project management rather than following, you know, something by the book. Uh, just having like a rock star, you know, mm. insert title develop rock star <laughs> scrum master or rock star developer who is a sort of a mix of a cowboy of improvisation and also following some guidelines and then people label those as agile scrum done well and mm. done badly and that seems to be the main topic of conflict for yeah. for and against mm. so to get to to maybe you know give reward our listeners our viewers a little bit let's start with the good stuff what does it look like when you do agile scrum well well definitely the what i see and this is a huge topic the benefits of agile the bad things in waterfall uh, 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 world the obvious gain of agile is um, time to value time to market it's mm -hmm. definitely time to value the first value i i i call it is uh, definitely much much shorter and uh, compared to what compared to traditional uh, waterfall project uh, so what what is the difference uh, uh, like default default waterfall project is that a default uh, means, always no okay. That, okay. it's never default huh. but school example of waterfall project and uh, how people that don't have experience with that world imagine all projects are mm. is preparation phase you analyze everything you try to estimate everything you make a plan budget and then execution and then closing of the project. Uh, this is like a default, probably vision of a waterfall project uh, for uh, most people. Um, so this in kind what of industry? process. Sorry for interrupting you. Don't, just to nail down on that detail. In I'm, what to I'm talking about IT telecom. IT telecom. So like large. These corporate. are the industries I, I have experience uh, uh, mm -hmm. in and uh, not talking about manufacture, uh, something like that. Uh, but uh, time to value uh, in the typical uh, school uh, example of water projects is definitely uh, after the whole execution phase, 
you deliver the whole thing. And this mm-hmm. is the first time customer sees the value. And mm-hmm. uh, this is the actually, they, they see the whole value in the same moment. Uh, but, but this is a long, uh, a long uh, period, project mm-hmm. end in Agile. Sounds if like it's are, zero, 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 yeah. and then one. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe yeah. one. <laughs> maybe one, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, but it's never, it's never like that. Uh, in Agile, of course, uh, iterative approach, uh, you go small. Uh, first value is some kind of MVP, mm-hmm. uh, not a complete idea, complete value that will be gained at the end, but the first value, and by the idea of agile, real value, usable value that will actually bring the value to the customer is much, much, uh, much uh, shorter. So in few sprints, maybe something usable is already there. So also productively usable, but also usable for the customer to actually uh, feel it and actually uh, get the better vision what they really need, because it's really usual that customer, somebody who is ordering something doesn't know what they need. Mm-hmm. They, they think that know, they know what they want to, uh, to get, but they don't ne- never, they, they, they never uh, know uh, completely. So that's definitely gain of agile. So uh, when you say customer and they order something in, in the context of like a big telco mm-hmm. corporate setting, is the customer an actual user of the platform or somebody who, is it just another organization that buys from another organization it can be it's it's the same if it's uh, like external like you, you are agency and you have like a, a customer who is ordering a software for that's a good point so you, but also internal internal customer maybe uh, for example in telecom when i worked in telecom uh, we were i, I was in uh, like implementation department uh, mm-hmm. uh, i had a business department somewhere there and they were ordering uh, services or products from us, we would coordinate the execution with the development teams, something like that. Mm-hmm. So uh, approximately the same setup as with external customer, right? So I'm not an expert on Agile and Scrum, although I have been exposed to it, done well, done badly, you know, over the course of my 15 year career. Uh, you know that I have more experience. So I'll just ask you directly. When we're not dealing with like an end user of the system, is that still value? It, it seems like there's a disconnect somewhere where if I'm an agency, I'm building for a paying, let's say B2B purchase, rather than ex- deploying something, the team deploys something to the customer to look at feedback, to gather feedback, to learn something, that those things are very separate. But you seem to conflate those things as whoever is paying has is um, yeah, but value. this is not really the question of agile of met- implementation methodology. It's a more um, product uh, question, product management, uh, product development question. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's definitely always uh, uh, advisable to have contact, to have communication with end user also, mm-hmm. even, even if you are uh, building a product for a bit be customer who will have their end users you need to get in touch with the end user because information will be lost uh, if you don't if you what have kind a of proxy. value yeah what kind of value can so, so it's it's, it's, a, it's it sounds like it's optional like when you have the b2b purchase that communicating with the user is optional i mean uh, in Talking about the real world of business, uh, mm-hmm. when you have company ordering from you, yeah, is ordering the service, you know, in the real world, uh, you can advise what should be done, but uh, at the end, it's their call. Hmm. But right? it feels like the the agile manifesto sort of contradicts that in its pure form. It does, but uh, you know, the real world. So hmm. the the problem I have with. Uh, uh, I don't have a problem, but uh, I see a lot of discussions. Uh, uh, this uh, this sound, sounds like waterfall. Uh, estimations should not be done. Budget should not be defined. No, in the world of in the real world, if you are not uh, like uh, 
um, Tesla or Google, you're a small company, you don't have opportunity to be idealistic. Mm -hmm. I mean, you might have, but I, I would say often you don't have opportunity. You, you cannot choose uh, customers. You are fighting for customers. Mm. And at the end, uh, the paying customer has their right to say what they want. The, uh, so the, it's not uh, like I'm saying you need to blindly do what customer says they want. The, you, you in the product development, you need to really find the, the customer pain need, uh, not do requirements, but uh, it's never like black and white, mm -hmm. right? Because paying customer has their uh, expectations, uh, maybe processes in the company, um, constraints, uh, you know, for example, uh, estimations and planning it's not advis advisable uh, because e e estimations are always wrong yes but um, the customer can have the constraint of a budget <laughs> they they can really for various of reasons they they can have like a strategically internal decision that the budget is constrained but they can really have just a constrained amount of money because they they are startup they have they 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 uh, uh, found they, they they have funding and uh, limited amount of money and uh, you know they need if if they have a, a restricted budget uh, and they have some need what they want what they need really which you you must mm -hmm. find what they really need mm -hmm. you they 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 have to make a plan to be sure that they will actually get the end result. I'm not saying they will write on the paper, this should be an end result. No, it's a process of product development, but uh, they need to know if they will actually get the value they need with the budget they have. The so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the outcome uh, needs to be something that they can work with, uh, something that they have a business case for, mm -hmm. right? This is, this is the, the uh, huge uh, uh, problem or misunderstanding of a lot of people in like business people, let, let's call them business people, be it uh, like internal management uh, in a lot of companies and the like idealistic agile world. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that, that I see you no know, almost on a daily basis in the real world. And uh, I don't think the solution is to convince everybody that uh, estimations don't make sense, mm -hmm. because I, I I believe that uh, the the truth is somewhere somewhere in between. I think uh, estimations are like um, reality, but the issue with estimations that I see, and I see the issue with estimations. The issue is that estimations are often not understood as estimations but they are understood as a promise of a future mm -hmm. or a prediction which they are not and um, in a lot of discussions with uh, with people from from the agile world um, i think their uh, the, the understanding is often often that um, that uh, like waterfall world is estimations uh, like uh, getting stuck on estimations on the budget on the scope mm -hmm. and then you fail and uh, the team is like punished it's not like that uh, the the fact that estimations are estimations is built in into the pmi uh, P PMBOK, uh, body of knowledge old school waterfall projects uh, it's it's in the detail of uh, that uh, planning phase of the waterfall project by PMI lasts the whole project from the start till the end, mm -hmm. the planning planning phase, and uh, it should be done uh, that when you see the change, that then you replan it, uh, and uh, there are a lot of the constraints by the book, uh, the, the the project constraints like uh, scope or time, which are really all not i mean i cannot say always but uh, often like typically changed 
-hmm. They are typically changed. Uh, really, scope and timeline are typically tools that project managers in the old school waterfall projects use to deal with uncertainty, with, uncertainty. with, the, with the risks that uh, appear. So it, it seems like you naturally went from agile done well to an example of agile done badly about abusing estimations, ignoring the multivariate factor of, you know, this is an estimate, but it means that it's 80% likely to be that and 10% 5x that, right? So there's maybe some math com complexity there. Um, when we're talking about this idea that you mentioned earlier about um, the what the client, the business wants and what they need. I really like this analogy of this spectrum of what they want, what they think they want, what the inputs are, what the outputs are, and what the outcome is. It seems like agile seems to focus on when agile is done bad, um, when agile is done well, a good example is a team that is fully autonomous to deal with the outcome. When agile is done badly, the, the critique I get, the, I hear about the most is when it is used by management to double down for, for the need for certainty on inputs. How many hours will we input? How many, you know, we want this thing. We believe that what we want is the correct thing. How many inputs do we need to guarantee to get what we want? And it seems to be focusing on the wrong side of the spectrum. What's your opinion on this? Uh, I agree uh, that, yeah, uh, it, uh, it's often misused uh, exactly in the way that uh, you described. Um, but again, um, I don't think this is really just a problem of agile uh, uh, misusage. This is the, the, the fact that the client doesn't, the customer doesn't know what they need, that this needs to be like, found is a, is a fact of life because people cannot envision something they don't they, they cannot feel so it's the same also in the old school waterfall projects the typical definition i'm i know i'm returning back to, to the waterfall mm -hmm. but, it, but, but i like that you mentioned the customer if i may chime in when you said when your customer doesn't know you know, if you're trained, if you're the trained professional scrum master, coach, whatever, a product owner, manager, then in game theory, if you want a game theory optimal path for success, then your strategy should also work when the customer doesn't understand what it is you do, right? Because they're not the expert, you're the expert. Yeah, exactly. So, so ending up on the wrong side of the spectrum seems to be unintentional. That, we, that we, the collaboration of a customer who is you know um benevolent you know he he wants to succeed and he wants you to succeed and you want him to succeed and mm -hmm. you want your company to succeed but still unintentionally somehow a lot of companies end up on the wrong side of the spectrum mm -hmm. how to avoid that how to get back on track uh doing the the the, the whole product development process right uh, uh, which is not con uh, constrained by the methodology used for the delivery. Uh, I was like 10 years ago, if, maybe even more, I, I got a certification for the requirement engineering and the main like main focus, how to describe it is exactly, so it's bef not before Agile, but we didn't use the Agile and this, this, this uh, training was for old school projects. Mm -hmm. And the focus was find the value for the customer. Do not take the requirement from the customer. Yes, yes, yes. So exactly what you say, you are the expert, you have to uh, help uh, the customer to with you found, find what uh, what outcomes are needed here. So it doesn't, uh, Agile is, I agree, uh, more focused on this. Uh, uh, and uh, I think this is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Because uh, people Learning about agile also uh, get this uh, this kind of view and uh, also get trained into into this uh, this approach. Uh, I think that's good, but uh, it's not. Uh, I don't see it as a gain of uh, of agile. This is, 
I, I'm telling you, I, I was certified for requirement engineering, the, and and we, we were focused on that. The, like the definition of the, in the uh, for the sorry. waterfall project success, yeah, PMI. It's not that the project is done in the predefined time, predefined scope. It's that customer is happy with the, the result of the project. Mm -hmm. There's a definition of old, of old school project, which is, I think, really compatible with the agile mm -hmm. view, view of things. So that sounded like it's okay if we miss the deadline as long as the customer is happy. Um, it's not okay if you just miss the deadline, like, oh, sorry, we missed the deadline. It's old school way is that it's controlled, it's communicated, uh, approved to mm. miss a deadline. Uh, but uh, at the end, yes, it's not important to uh, achieve the deadline. It's important to have a customer happy. So when you set up the this kind of project mm -hmm. in the setup phase, it's important to go through all the possible project constraints like uh, scope, uh, uh, timeline, uh, uh, but also budget quality mm -hmm. of delivery if you are talking about software and uh, to agree of the prioritization of the constraints. So the customer can say it can, I mean, I can imagine uh, real, uh, uh, real world uh, um, cases when the timeline is really the most important constraints, for example, mm -hmm. for example, regulatory uh, um, feature, I don't know, some report that government said you need to have it from the 1st of October, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So in this kind of project, the timeline is the most important one. But then you have to, if you get to the problems, and you always do, uh, then you have to play with the other constraints, with the scope. Let's this scope. Let's let's do the MVP of the of the report, uh, or let's uh, let's reduce the quality maybe of the software. To you know, let's allow maybe more hmm. bugs or or um, shorten the time of uh, of QA of testing uh, of the whole thing. Uh, but you will you will uh, uh, try to get to the deadline in this case. Uh, this is where I think the, the PMI, I, the methodology is better. Uh, did I lost you there? No, for we a just second. had a slight hiccup, continue. Slight glitch. Here, I think the, the PMI, the PMBOK um, definition, here is uh, is, is better uh, do documented. You, you, there is a better uh, support of the standard, let's say, mm -hmm. and the community actually about all these details uh, for the projects than it's in, in the agile. In the agile world, it, there is not so much focus because it's always like, let's embrace the uncertainty. And, you know- funny. But it's funny because the way you described waterfall and agile and the way, you know, people, you know, budget things and plan things, that's not embracing uncertainty. That's creating the illusion of certainty. You know, if, it, if we're embracing uncertainty, mm -hmm. I would assume that that's like chaos. It's like, we don't know what will happen. Mm -hmm. We will finish this sprint and then we will change course. That seems to be embracing uncertainty. Not embracing uncertainty and dealing with it and creating a fictional certainty is, well, create estimates and then I will hold you accountable to the estimates mm -hmm. and then we will repeat that cycle. So these two seem to be similar, but on very, you know, opposite ends of the spectrum. I we mentioned yeah. when I talk to uh, usually to management about the agile. I think the vision that they often have about agile is exactly the one you describe as let's embrace uh, uncertainty. Let's just go into the spin. Will it be delivered? We don't know. We will see because uh, software <laughs> development is full of uncertainty. Hmm. It's full of uncertainty, yes, but uh, let's have the accountability uh, on the proper level. So who's accountable? Well, by Scrum, the, the Scrum team, the whole team is accountable for delivery. But if uh, you had to put one person in charge? <laughs> I don't think uh, that's the way uh, it's meant to be in the, in the Scrum, hmm. uh, at least. It's like one person. Yeah, because there does seem to be a bus generally, like somebody who signs up on deadlines. Um, well, on deadlines, 
yeah but again we are talking about deadlines <laughs> in your which experience are not so much is supported it, yeah sorry sorry for talking over you <laughs> uh, um well by scrum and i agree with it uh, the product owner is uh, accountable for the product vision mm -hmm. roadmap and the value delivered so mm. but, uh, but the development team is accountable for delivering what is agreed to be delivered in a sprint and not delivered by like uh, features or even user stories but the sprint goal which is some kind of description of a value that the customers need to get hmm. after the sprint and this is a good thing this, this i love this kind of definition of the scoping uh, that scrum has because uh, it uh, enables the whole team to be creative when we when you get to the issues because if you if you if you define scope which is often done and this is the bad thing uh, uh, the bad uh, uh, usage of scrum often the scope of i will say the scope of the scrim there is some cringes in the <laughs> agile world now but the scope of the sprint is uh, often defined as a list of of uh, user stories like a sprint backlog this is wrong the sprint goal should be the scope of the sprint and the sprint goal is focused on the value so mm -hmm. that enables you to the scope stuff basically so uh i don't know the sprint goal is for the customer to get uh, uh i don't know 50 percent more of the hits on their web page for example you imagine on the sprint planning that it can be achieved by these features you you create them as items to the to the backlog but at the end it can be that you decide okay we, we cannot really hmm. uh, implement this feature because of that reason blah blah, blah. let's let, let's uh, come to different features uh, uh, um, minimized feature or completely different feature to get the, the same outcome right to, to get to the same sprint goal and this is this is where uh, I think uh, the value of Scrum is because it enables the whole team, the developers, product owner, uh, the whole team to get to, to be creative. The, some, let's say, old school way would be, you know, some kind of product person creates a, 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 a like precise specification, and then development team developers take the specification and then just translate it to the code and so they to, hmm? to to chime to take a little bit a small step back mm -hmm. when you said earlier about the difference between the list the backlog the list of stories versus the the outcome for the value for mm -hmm. for, for this sprint for the this, sprint goal yeah the sprint goal if i just put those two together it, it does sound like if the primary focus is delivering stories, there's a very high chance of delivering a sprint that doesn't have a goal, that doesn't have value. And it, and it does it does resonate with a lot of stories that I hear people when yeah. they when they add when they put ten stories into a sprint, and then they deliver ten percent of each mm, yeah. with ten people working on ten separate things rather yeah, than a yeah. team working on one thing yeah um, how do you get out of the trap because that seems unintentional you hit really good point uh this is really often the situation i saw it uh, many times uh how do you get out of it um, i think you should really change the change the way of uh, defining uh, uh, the sprint goal the the commitment of a team for delivery in the sprint it shouldn't be it shouldn't be a list of features it should be the outcome the value for the customer mm -hmm. the value for the user can uh, i use the j word uh which one jira and ah, jira. we just lost everybody <laughs> <laughs> if i if i go to jira generally if the goal is the most important thing mm -hmm. if i open it up generally what is the medium that communicates the goal of the sprint? 
because like 99% of the time, if I go to a company and I open up their Jira, if they let me what, take a look, I will just see epics and stories and it will be in this status and in that status. Yes. And it's like story, 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 story. And then I need to ask them and interview five different people who will then check an archive of emails to figure out what the goal is or what the goal was that they missed in the first place. Because now we're in sprint five and nobody knows anymore. Right. Well, uh, I mean, these tools uh, do, uh, do, do, do let you to, to document the sprint goal. We, uh, I use Jira, I use the Microsoft uh, Azure DevOps and uh, after using DevOps, I love jira because <laughs> <laughs> oh no oh no <laughs> i i like jira more than devops uh, um but it's similar it's similar tool um i agree uh mm -hmm. this kind of tools will push you into direction of uh doing doing the scrum uh, uh wrong uh, by actually doing the waterfall with the with the work packages the small the stories and epics because i because i was about to say that because it does seem like jira mm -hmm. if you just embrace jira it will it will push you into waterfall i mean if you if you're if, unexperienced if, if, if you is you know if you are, are experienced yes. yes and if you just uh i don't know are lazy and just go with the flow yes it will push you to that uh direction but uh you if, if, if you are in an organization larger than, I don't know, 10, 20 people, then you need some kind of tools to document ideas. Uh, to, you, you cannot uh, rely on a post-it and just uh, uh, real-time communication without writing it down. Because, you know, if you have, uh, I don't know, uh, 10 plus customers uh, you are speaking to, uh, you, you have to document the, the, the ideas. And this is where Jira, yeah. tool like Jira is good. You, you document the stories, but you don't take yeah. these stories as a uh, work packages predefined, which need to be like a- Like, like fake certainty, a, like fake yeah. guarantees. Y y yes. Uh, the way to do it is uh, treat every sprint as a sprint, define a sprint goal. You mm -hmm. can take these uh, product backlog items, mm -hmm. uh, which are the Jira user stories, uh, as a reference. You you need to talk about the the, the stories uh, often, uh, groom them or refine them, whatever you want to call it, uh, and not just once. And they are groomed, they are ready, and in six months they they need to be implemented exactly exact the same way. No, you can. Uh, re-talk about them because mm -hmm. stuff changes but wh when you get to the sprint why not fill the sprint with the with the user stories this is documentation uh, that enables that speeds up the communica communication but the outcome of the sprint for the sprint to be successful is not every story in the sprint backlog Only in production outputs. it's yeah not the outputs not every story in production but the the outcome the value for the client for the customer achieved mm -hmm. and you can define it uh, uh, in these tools uh, azure devops has on the, on the page so, of the sprint you have the column for the sprint goal gordon for teams that i worked on it feels like it's not obvious who should define the goal the goal should be defined by the team is so that the, what this happens is... to goals when when it's like a collective responsibility to define it? How do you deal with that disagreement? Who who has the final say on what the goal for the sprint? Well, in my opinion, product owner has to have the final say, but uh, um, definitely for the sprint backlog, for like the items, the the lines of codes, co code that will be done in the sprint, uh, product owner cannot have the last uh, word. Mm. Uh, product owner is uh, focused on the outcome and development de uh, development team is focused on how to get to this sprint goal to the outcome. okay but that's that that sounds like a really really unrealistic ideal in the real world it's very likely you have a product owner who doesn't know or or whether i i've been on a lot of teams and i coached consulted a lot of teams where there's this artificial maybe adversity or or some like tribal behavior going on mm -hmm. between the tech people and mm -hmm. the product people it's like this is a 
tech story. Here I'm refactoring something. Yeah. And this is a product story. This is something that has design and UX. And there seems to be, when there, whenever there's negotiation involved and there has to be agreement, those items are done last. Uh -huh. So if you need agreement across the entire organization to define a sprint goal, it mm. does sound like that that there is an unrealistic expectation. Mm, I like don't the, think that's agile. That really to the that's core. Not agile. That, that's Why? not agile to the core. Uh, sprint, uh, the sprint, uh, the team has to be independent, be capable of defining this stuff for 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 themselves, because mm. if you need to get the approval of some other party stakeholder in the organization, you are slow. You cannot do sprints like There's dependencies, which is the whole point, right? Yeah. To minimize hand offs. Yeah. Backs, yeah. Yeah. Dependency. Yeah. Yeah. The tool to uh, that should be the communication tool to the the whole organization and the stakeholders, the management is the mm -hmm. uh, roadmap. Is management part of ad the Scrum team? No. The man, uh, Scrum team is product owner, uh, Scrum master, and uh, uh, developers, which by Scrum guide are everybody else. <laughs> so it's, it's developers, QA, okay, business analyst. Here's an example. And I think a lot of our listeners, viewers will resonate with this. You have a not yet corporate, but growing into corporate environment. Startup, VC funding, FinTech, Meditech, insurance tech, whatever. 40 people, 20 of those are engineers. You go from 40 to 100 in a few years. And you went from one team that was capable of, you know, you went from pizza scale of like one team, one backend, one front end, one app developer, one designer, one UX guy, and then a lot of people wearing many different hats and then collaborating. You go from that and then, okay, now we have departments. Now we have a tech department, mm -hmm. engineering. Now we have IT. Now we have product. We have design. We have marketing. We have traditional going towards corporate. Mm -hmm. The moment, so if I if I take you literally on what you said earlier, it sounds like the moment these departments arise, whoever was doing agile, hopefully the entire organization was doing agile mm -hmm. slash scrum before, the moment these departments arrive, it's over. It's waterfall. Like even if one team is doing, pretending to do agile internally inside of the department, they're doing waterfall and they don't know. Well, the organization that you described, maybe, uh, maybe with that kind of organization, uh, that's true. But uh, if you are using Scrum for, for product delivery. In a growing you, company. In the growing company. Uh, of, so in the small company, the Scrum team should be able to independently uh, deliver the value that means that if you need somebody to the designer to design the, the graphical interface mm -hmm. that uh, person needs to be in the scrum team the scrum the team, team has to be uh, uh, capable of delivering the value themselves the outcome uh, the yeah. uh, the outcome yes mm -hmm. uh, marketing uh, is additional uh, support uh, for the business uh, uh, so uh, uh, and that doesn't need to be part of the scrum team scrum team is like uh, delivering the product uh, uh, other parties in organization are by scrum guide called stakeholders mm -hmm. and uh, of course there are stakeholders outside of the scrum team that have a stake in a in mm -hmm. a, something that should be delivered in the sprint and they are supported by the by the scrum uh, by the scrum guide uh, in a way that they can uh, influence the product owner uh, in a way to uh, tell him maybe consider uh, adding uh, this kind of feature <laughs> value whatever very soft word <laughs> yeah I, I, but that, that's reality but uh, mm -hmm. influence to add something to prioritize something and they can uh, join some of the uh, scrum events like uh, mm -hmm. sprint review if there is some delivery in the sprint that is really important to i don't know head of marketing head of marketing can join the sprint review because there are may maybe even uh, like a customer in some way and they they are able they, they are permitted <laughs> to to join the sprint review to see the, i don't know the presentation maybe of the delivery to ask questions and to hear 
what is delivered and discuss what maybe should be uh, planned for the next sprint. That sounds uh, like a very complicated negotiation internally in the company. The, the, the important thing by Scrum is to have a product owner who is a, a accountable person for the product. So, so the team should not be in the room when this is happening. Uh, is the product owner negotiating on the team's behalf? No, pro no. For the Scrum team, product owner is the one uh, defining the value that that needs to be uh, delivered. Uh, so who, who negotiates with the stack stakeholders who are influencing? Product owner. Product owner. Product owner and, the, yeah. and the engineers are not in the room. No, no, no. So for this kind of uh, yeah, because a lot of engineers that I know, you know, the, the thing they say they don't they hate the most is 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 arguing or negotiating really you know doing like a sales interview mm -hmm. with an assertive boss where mm -hmm. they know but who is the, the boss who is the boss, boss here uh a like stakeholder manager. Slash manager internal to the company that is trying to influence what the team is working on look in the by this by scrum guide uh, guide you have scrum master who is uh, like uh, protecting the process you have product owner who is like really representative of a business of a customer uh, in inside of the Scrum team. The influence, the the that kind of uh, influence is that the, some boss comes to the developer says, "Ah, you need to uh, deliver this by this by this uh, date." It's not how the Scrum and Agile. <laughs> Agile overall is, is uh, not how it's imagined, but... Uh, but it seems like the CEO, if that's the CEO, he loses power over what the... I don't think uh, CEO in the company with uh, more than like 20 people should uh, go to each developer and, you know, tap on the back when this will be delivered. There are people accountable for this. You have product owner, you have Scrum Master. Scrum Master, there will be cringes, but Scrum Master is some kind of project manager in this inside of the sprint let's say project manager for the sprint so mm -hmm. uh yeah, really accountable person also but also product owner so if uh, management needs to some answers that they are people accountable still, still there's this this idea that developers generally lack soft skills i know it's a very unfair over general generalization but they don't like negotiating they're not in they're now mm -hmm. a salesperson they maybe not don't even speak the language of the business of the product mm. guys. They they just speak tech. Um, what is what advice would you give to somebody who is in a position where their scrum master, the product owner, maybe the roles aren't even clear, just somebody, their manager, let's say their superior or second line superior, who conflates what they want and what the company needs. So they conflate inputs versus outcome. How should, a, how should a developer who is sort of starting off in that company, mid to senior, or what advice would you give? How to, how to deal with that conflict? Because that's, that's very common. Uh, it, we really, developer shouldn't be bothered by these uh, kind of things. Uh, hmm. But uh, he is affected, he or she. I mean, but not directly. Scrum Master is there to protect the team uh, from uh, that kind of distractions, really. Mm -hmm. And I think it can work like that. And I really believe that uh, it's not in the CEO's interest to <laughs> go and check with like developer <laughs> implementing something when something will be delivered. But it's not in the CEO's interest. In the CEO interest is to have a person who can gather all this information and uh, provide the information to 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 see the ceo uh, but that's very hard it's not it, scalable it's, yeah it's not scalable at such you know, low level yeah that that like that example you just gave me and, and maybe we we started going in different directions uh, i just want to maybe ask you for your direct advice on this is if i if i put this very example of this protection this this bubble you know the scrum master should protect if I, if I take this example and I push it to the extreme, then the developers will become isolated from the business, from the CEO, from the C-level executives, and they will never learn how to communicate with them because they are constantly being isolated. So maybe they will never learn these skills. 
of how to communicate with the business. Am right. I am I in La La Land? Have you ever seen this? Well, happen? okay. In my opinion, uh, developers should uh, be in touch with the customer. Uh, with the customer. With the customer, yes, but uh, with uh, there is there is organization. And it's not Scrum problem. There is organization hmm. protecting or or easing the this this kind of communication i really don't think that it's a optimizing good practice optimizing yeah I, I really don't think it's a good practice for ceo to go to each developer to ask because what what, what is this ceo doing uh, mm -hmm. in his his day checking uh, mic micromanaging the team this is really not this it is a co common critique that engineers are faced with managers execs you know, cross or cross department micromanagement yeah. happening by remote control by abusing Jira, Scrum, agile practices. Right. Know. Uh I don't think uh, in this case probably Scrum Master and or product owner are not uh, doing the job completely. So what's the solution? Uh, Training, Scrum coaching. Uh, how, do you, how do you help the no, scrum no, master? retrospective, <laughs> this sprint retrospective, and this developer to raise the issue. Uh, why is CEO checking the status of something that I don't have mm -hmm. with me? So that that is something you would raise as a yeah, very this, important. This, this is the great uh, great topic for the for the sprint uh, retro. But uh, one thing I would you ask me for uh, what advice I would give? Yeah. This this is easy. Advice is like uh, talk to your team leader or scrum master and say why is this happening. But uh, the, my advice for the like uh, stereotype developer who doesn't care about business is if you want to be in the world of business, then maybe get interested in the business because uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it doesn't make sense that you are just like a code monkey. Uh, I, I experienced this a few times. Is that times self inflicted? Is that, is that like, if I stop caring about the business as a, do I make myself a code monkey? Because a lot of people I think, think that's that a path. Fucked. It's a path to that. Uh, mm -hmm. to, to that. I, I encountered this, uh, this kind of thing. Uh, that's great times. advice. Yeah. That's great uh, advice. I, I think understanding of why developer is coding something is good for him in a lot lot of ways uh, it will make his his uh output or outcome of his output better uh, it will make him uh uh, uh, uh have le uh, less like uh, basic questions to to somebody who did the specification you know if, mm -hmm. if he understand the 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 environment uh, behind it and uh, it will enable him for to to get better at his job, maybe to advance uh, in in the career, uh, etc. So definitely, I think if you are not in the lab on the college coding something in the lab, if you are really in the business world mm -hmm. in the company on the market, my advice is learn about the business. <laughs> about your business, the business. Yeah. Doing. It, Learn about the business, uh, the the, the uh, environment around you uh, that makes you do at the end uh, your job. It's great advice, Gordon. Yeah. I'm looking at the time um, and I have a really big question that might be interesting. And I just want to know, are you okay with like another 20 minutes for us talking about or do you want to wrap up soon? Um, 15 minutes, I think is good. <laughs> okay. I, I think I can squeeze in my question in 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, you talked about when the influencers, the stakeholders are external. So the external element is maybe up in the organization or to the side where it's like an agency and it, there's a customer. My question is about the other spectrum. Now with remote working, you know, post COVID, during COVID, you know, we don't know what will happen in the next five years, but it seems remote work and work from home will stay. What? with offshoring, nearshoring in mind, where you have external developers and you have a team that manages the outcome and mm -hmm. the business organization, is, is it still Scrum or Agile if you outsource that middle part, the inputs and outputs, the developers? Is that, is that still technically 
benevolently, productively Scrum? What are good? Yes. Yeah, so, so this case is when just the developers are uh, outside of the organization, and I guess the product owner would be inside of the organization. Let's say yes. Having the external it, develop, yeah. development team. Um, it is Scrum, uh, yes, but uh, I, I watched your previous, your first episode. With Ty, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He does uh, this a lot, right? So he has the opposite setup, the counter corporate <laughs> setup. Yeah. And I would agree uh, with uh, some point there that uh, in this setup, uh, developers will probably tend to no uh Hands not, not to problem. question too much uh, do as as they are told um and this is yeah th this is the the um, uh like uh, advantage of internal team because uh, internal team can be motivated intrinsically and uh, uh give like more than mm -hmm. they are told to right right uh, yeah. it's it's probably um it will happen uh, 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 in more more um, cases than with the external team, but uh, it's still Scrum. But the, I, I don't don't see why why Scrum framework is would not support such case uh, really. But yeah, I would I would advise that. Uh, but not even. I, I mean, I worked in a setup uh, 15 years ago uh, uh, where I was like a, a, the business uh, owner from the customer side, and I had the agency. An agency had the Scrum setup in er Internal. early, early, early days, and they had like a product owner who was speaking to me a lot, and then internally he was a product owner defining what uh, needs to be done with the with the internal uh, scrum team and then i think that worked uh but uh, in this that, case that is a common setup yeah especially yeah, in europe and yeah. I mean, selling to but, but in this in this case i think that this kind of product owner on the in the agency on the agency side is more in direction of a proxy proxy hmm. uh, of a business from the customer side, right? It, it, the accountability and ownership is, I think, less than when this product owner is a is a internal uh, person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, more more like uh, more like uh, doing the the role uh, in the Scrum process to, to make this the Scrum process work. Uh, but uh, the ownership and the business ownership uh, is, I believe, less in this case. So, okay, that's a good, that's a very good point. But it's it's non traditional. You say it's not. You wouldn't recommend it to do it that way. If you're building an agency, you wouldn't make it agile or scrum. No, 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 no. Uh, I didn't say that. I, uh -huh. I don't know why why you get the impression I said that because I really strongly believe huh. opposite. Agency and scrum, I think, is a perfect fit. Okay, so it's less. Of a fit for corporate, like in the in the sector you're in. I would like to say it's not, but the reality is that it's it is less of a fit because in the mm -hmm. corporate environment, uh, the uh, certainty is desired, uh, and it's often uh, it's often forced into false certainty. Uh, There's many dependencies like, and yeah. inputs. Certainly, yeah. around inputs becomes yeah. more more of a priority than yeah. outcomes. A agency setup where you charge man hours, I think that's a perfect for Scrum setup because you know you have hours mm -hmm. in in the sprints. You don't. You, this is the budget. You mentioned payment. Uh, Ninety percent of the agencies that I know charge for inputs, or maybe if it's a more legal, mature, legally mature organization they're charging for delivered outputs mm. very rarely do i see a value priced company mm. that charges based on performance on outcomes it's like you know i want to i want to yeah. have a new e-commerce store so i can sell more well okay you know crystal jonathan stark the the value pricing proponents influencers on youtube and linkedin they say okay well how much more do you want to sell with the website um 40 more okay well i will charge you half of that upon delivery of the product uh -huh. right I, that's very rare like do would you ever charge for 
what's your opinion? Like, wh where should the budget be defined? On what I want, what the inputs are, what the outputs are, what the outcome will be. Which of these would you set the, the budget on? I think uh, most uh, transparent and uh, honest way uh, is to charge uh, man hours, really. I believe so. Input. Uh, input, yes. Uh, because if you charge output, then you have to get in the zone of the planning, uh, budgeting, uh, waterfall mm -hmm. a bit. But that means that if I'm very good, if I'm very good and I do it faster, I get paid less. And if I'm very bad and we need one more sprint, I get paid more. That that seems like a very dangerous incentive structure. But uh, charging the outputs is also dangerous because I'm, so, I'm, I'm talking uh, charging yeah. the outcome, not the output. So I'm I'm talking charging. Well, if you want to the value based. Uh, value based, value yeah. based yeah. If I'm if I'm talking, you wanna you make one million sales now with the new website, you'll make one right. million five hundred. I'll charge you two hundred k. There is a risk uh, for you. Exactly. Uh, yeah. The agency. The agency. I mean, uh, if, there is always a risk, but uh, in the input charging, uh, I mean, if there is dishonesty. Uh, Dishonesty. No, it's not dishonesty. It's an estimate, right? I mean, we, we come back to this topic. Like the outcome, the guaranteed outcome improvement is also an estimate. Look, but if it's, you... the, it's, it's a difference whether we're estimating yeah. the inputs that go in or estimating the outcome that will be provided. But here, at least, there's a risk profile that matches that. What do you think? Right. I, I think this is a really, really hard topic. And I don't mm -hmm. think I... I, I don't know the solution what's the best and i never saw uh solution horizon i think uh, this is case by case and uh, the, the financial part of things is really constrained by the customer and uh, if you have old school customer the corporation uh, you know i i worked in uh, in uh, travel industry i work mm -hmm. in uh, in the food industry, these industries are really old school. Uh, uh, Technology-wise, they are old school. Um, lots of uh, regulation, lots of paperwork, lots yeah, of and certainty the, needed. And, and the companies are not uh, digitalized so much. Uh, huh. People working in the companies don't have so much uh, experience with the technology. Yeah. Um, you know, there is a lot of pen and, pen and paper uh, uh, work. And uh, to... Uh, explain the benefits of agile to this kind of organizations this is really challenging really mm. challenging uh, why where does the challenge originate what are you trying to say they are used to they are used to certainty we we are uh, searching for a vendor we have we have this amount of money or uh, uh, and uh, we want to know when we will get what we want for this money we are paying you know we, this kind that, of certainty but that sounds like value pricing that sounds like they want guarantee about outcome that certainty you know how, uh, how does this link happen you know i want to paint my wall i don't want a guarantee that you will paint my wall for two hours i want a guarantee that my wall will be beautiful and not look like shit tomorrow that's one guarantee you want but yeah. you also, I mean, in, in plus I don't want to I don't want to pay a thousand, right? <laughs> so if it's yes, like X but, square but meters, often, I don't... often you also want to know uh, when it will be done. This is really typical. Yeah, when it will be done. But when you are looking at, I mean, if you are really paying somebody to paint your uh, walls, uh, you, I don't know, would you be satisfied with uh, with uh, um, uh, answer we don't know when it will be done because when we start painting we will see what what's there you know well no but my point is you know if i trusted them i would i would appreciate the conversation that went something like this i have some problems you know there's some little cracks and some smudges on the walls i have a budget of 5k i want my walls to be beautiful to, to it on, i want it to look neat and well put together. It doesn't need to look expensive. It doesn't need to look fresh and professional. I just wanted to get an upgrade 
But okay. Can you but would you that? would you expect uh, also uh, the information when hours? it will be? No, because if they only take two hours, I'm fine with that. If they... but you are taking, you are saying two hours. This is estimation. No, but I'm not saying if they take two hours. I'm saying if they take two hours or two hundred hours, I don't care. If they won't charge me for that, if they say my budget mm -hmm. is five k, if they will spend my budget, and it will be five k if they take two hours or two hundred hours, that's a good deal for me because that is guarantees me that if is it though because you want you know your privacy eventually and you don't want to wait for 200 hours that's or 2000 hours well that's another guarantee then right i would guarantee yes. I, I would like a guarantee that i want my privacy i want you out of the house on until friday yeah that is more important to me than the estimate of when they when will they finish i don't i don't need to know when they will finish i just need to know that they will fuck off by friday so you are giving so them the deadline. Deadline. i'm giving them a deadline but i don't i'm not asking for an estimate and, and that's already but, complex but, right but like, it is estimate come... it is estimate it's you're not asking for a precise estimate but you are ask, asking for an estimate that they will be done at least by friday so this is estimate now the question is if they're a, a mature negotiator they might say i can leave by friday no problem but it will be unfinished so if you want to have your privacy on the weekend no problem. I will split it up into two chunks mm. and I will start and stop and finish and clean up on Friday. And then I will come back and start and stop and clean up next week as well. Is that okay with you? And and I might even be okay with that if it doesn't mean that, you know, the price doesn't absurdly increase because that is the outcome that I want. Those are my requirements. I, I have no requirement where it says you charge hourly and my requirement is okay, under five hours. That is not my requirement because even if I say mm. under five hours, if they come and they're late on Friday, they will work five hours, maybe six, and then they might actually not leave by the weekend, you know, because it, it, it quickly conflates what are we optimizing for? Yeah. I don't want to have a conversation where we're optimizing inputs. I want right. to optimize my out my outcome, which is my 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 requirements. Really. Right. But uh, how, how do you uh, support the case? that maybe when they start painting mm -hmm. you realize oh this paint actually looked better in the can <laughs> now on the wall doesn't look so much i mean i i think that's our accountability that i as the <laughs> what's my role here product owner <laughs> i don't know am i the product owner here um, maybe um, customer or the customer <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i i think that's my responsibility you know unless unless i saw it in the catalog and it looked good and they told me it's this color and then they start painting and it's a different color you know then i will be pissed off um mm. but if it's my mistake and it's just but this is the this is the the case in software development you cannot know how it will look on your wall before you see it on your wall it, the the paper the the can it's not the same so mm -hmm. the agile ways would be that uh, you agree with them let's try on this wall this color okay. and we will see and then they paint and then you see you say okay that's so you but that sounds like i would have to say paint it once we will see i pay you and then if i want to do it again i will pay you again and then i pay you for inputs and then i don't know how long it will take until i get to my desired level of beauty for for this uh, to work you would need uh, honest estimation how how long it will, it will work <laughs> honest estimation. Uh, a certainty for the certainty about uh, no, the uncertainty. No, no honest <laughs> estimation because estimation <laughs> in my opinion estimations can be done if they, uh, and should be done if they are understood as estimations and who is best to give estimations the experts in this case the guy who is painting the wall so okay, you, but how much time do you want to spend having a conversation on estimations well, i want him what, to work not estimate but he, he painted the uh, thousands of walls he can give you uh, this is the difference but that doesn't work but that doesn't work in software he, uh, yes but uh, developer is definitely uh, able to give better estimation than i don't know management are you sure for sure i would sure. i would heavily challenge that most really? of the developers i know they're off by 2x 3x on very common things 
educated guess. This is the estimation, educated guess. You, I mean, I, I, I'm used to having like a, some kind of senior developer uh, uh, figure that uh, helps developers come with estimations. Uh -huh, so you and, have a you have a secondary coach or mentor. Yeah, so like a coach, estimate. like a coach, which together with a guy who is going to uh, implement it, they talk and then uh, uh, come up with, with the estimation. So experience with uh, knowledge, uh, they mm -hmm. uh, get the, the estimation and this estimation gives you a ballpark. So uh, uh, the, the estimation here is not like, is, is the wall painting gonna uh, last five and a half hours or five hours and 45 minutes? It's, li it's like, it will it be like a week or a month? Because Wait, it will... but, then, but then that's backwards again, no? Is it? Because then if he's really good and if his estimate is accurate and he makes the estimate very quickly and he actually finishes very quickly, he barely earns anything. But uh, if he's honest and he knows his uh, job, then he will adjust pricing to earn something for a job of painting a apartment, right? So if he knows that he's good, he will adjust his they, price to the level of certainty uh, that he can guarantee. The, the uh, uh, end price of input pricing and the value pricing should be similar, right? He should... Uh, he should uh, uh, Wait, so, but, but that's good terminology, input pricing versus value pricing. When we're talking about software engineers sitting down in a room and starting to estimate stories, not, not even estimating the goal, the sprint goal, mm -hmm. but estimating stories, mm -hmm. is that a byproduct of having a predetermined input priced budget? Well, uh, yes, I would say yes so but to take the, away the budget yeah but you have a budget but the budget in this case is uh, salaries of the developers, and salaries right? of the developers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah yes this is the root cause of uh of this kind of um we found it pushing pushing the <laughs> even the scrum the agile into the into the estimations and the budget yeah I, I, but this is the reality this is reality is you, there an alternative? The companies are are uh, making projections of a, of a budget. They they mm -hmm. have to. I mean, I at least I believe they have to. Uh, and if you have in the in the chain of business, if you have planning somewhere, you have to have planning everywhere. Wow, and I think that's a great high to stop the podcast on. Wow, that's a great. That was a great journey. That yeah, was an amazing journey, Gordon. Thank you for like this blew my mind. Like that, this last part, <laughs> we really went deep. And yeah, we got down, and it wasn't course. prepared. <laughs> it wasn't prepared. Although I have to say, you and I did an intro call <laughs> that was something like this for an hour, and I was like, "Oh, I should have recorded this." <laughs> yeah, you were saying, "Let's stop. We will not uh, have anything to <laughs> yeah. talk." Uh, but yeah. I don't think I don't this think we great. replicated the that, that session here at all. Yeah, no, but it's it's great. It's great. Yeah. Um, well, what's a good way if viewers want to reach out to you, talk to Gordon, maybe learn from you? What's a good way to reach you, find you, social media? I think yeah, social media. LinkedIn is the best way. I think I'm there. You can search me up. Okay, LinkedIn, and it's Gordon Renic. Yes. I guess uh, in your post about this uh, session, there will be my my uh, name will be here, yeah. there, somewhere. YouTube. But uh, this this is good concept. I uh, I watched the first episode. I was in the second episode, and I'm looking forward to the next episodes. I who, think would you, this is... who would you like to see? If you could give me a recommendation of who you would like to see me talk to, I think it would be. Uh, I'm biased on the topics I'm interested in. Uh, yeah. I, I think it would be, it would be, I, I would pay to watch like extreme agile evangelist talking uh, like to, a religious. Yes, like religious talking to old school CEO, uh, you know, used to making budgets, used to certainty. Uh -huh. uh, 
I, I think that would be that would be a bit, but uh, with open-minded so, so sides. two people, so two, uh, two people. people that will two not... people still manning the the old school yeah, and not Edra. killing their uh, each other, but really discussing and coming to some conclusions. I would pay for that. That's great. That's great. Okay, I'll write that down. That that sounds like an amazing <laughs> challenge, Gordon. Before we wrap up, any advice? You are a musician, a father. A manager, a leader, a developer. Any advice for anybody I'm not, who is... I'm not a developer, but uh, <laughs> but sorry, technologist. <laughs> let's say. Um, any advice you would give for people who are starting off in the technology career, or maybe in a management career, or maybe becoming or thinking about becoming a parent, musician? Um, for the parent, this is a completely different uh, advice. Uh, <laughs> for the parent, uh, don't uh, embrace the uncertainty. You you cannot prepare for that. That that's nice. that's it. But for for the for the career, for anyone starting, whatever, uh, don't be too cocky. Uh, uh, understand that you don't understand things. Th this is the best thing. Uh, be aware of how how much you don't know and how much you can learn. And and uh, know that nobody can finish learning. No one. Mm -hmm. No one. Even the oldest most experienced guy in the company you look at him wow he knows so much he's also not close to finish learning you know it's you are always on the start of something if you are doing uh, good for your career you, you should always be starting to learn something new okay that's a good place to end the stream to the viewers and listeners, thank you for watching the second episode now. I'm learning. We had some technical difficulties. Yeah. Thank you for being patient. You sold them in four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't estimate it. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Gordon, thank you. Thank you.